minutes after 9 o'clock. Sheila Arnett is in the studio. We've known Sheila for a long time. She's been so active in our community, uh, along with her husband, Earl. And um, so we're going to talk to her about her, her candidacy for the Marion County School Board, District 5. And I guess we'll just say good morning. Good morning, Sheila. How are you doing? I'm great. Good, good morning. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. You are. You're involved in so many things. You helped. Can, can I tell you the ones I know? I know the, the Literacy Council. I know you guys helped with that. Um, and uh, so many different things. We see what everything. We see what the veterans functions and right. so many different things. So. Yeah, in fact, you and I were, I think, the same year, a Kiss the Horse contestant I think so, for yeah. the Literacy Council. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Robin and I came up with a list of, of things. I'm not going to go over them all with you. But one of the things, like the way to kind of judge a candidate, one of them is participation in community events mm -hmm. I, I, well it would it would apply if you i guess were an incumbent because how would we know if you weren't right and in your case are you did you ever hold office i, I, I have not i have not I'm, I'm married to former county commissioner earl arnett and right. so um a lot of people know me from from earl right so i have never held office and, and but we always see you at things and we know who you are because of earl right? I, right I guess i guess that makes sense right sure even though i i have a hunch you were instrumental in in a lot of the things that happened could be. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you're a pretty good photographer, right? Yes, I, I try. So what, what happened that made you want to uh, throw your hat in the ring for the school board? You know, as you mentioned, we're just, we're so involved. Um, we, I'm involved with the homeless. You know, the point in time count with, that HUD has the, you do every year. Um, it's a 24 hour period of time that you have to count as many homeless as you can find. I've, um, I've done that. Oh, um, wow. We, um, we just, we've raised our children um, and our grandson, Kyle, you, you, I'm sure you know, Kyle, you know, to give back. Earl, Elizabeth, and I each logged in about 20 hours each during Irma. I I was at Vanguard wow, wow. Um, helping the first night there, getting people in the shelter, and then Earl, Elizabeth, and I, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, helped man the um, emergency management number. Wow. Uh, just, you know, we love Marion County. We give back. And so as I was watching things that were happening with the school board, um, one of Earl's favorite sayings is, we can disagree without being disagreeable. And the mm -hmm. lack of civility and respect, and and I just felt that I needed to step in and, and maybe bring some stability there. Yeah. I don't know if I should say what I'm thinking, but I will. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the bad timing of... Um, I, I guess that the, everybody was watching the school board podcast, broadcast, whatever you call those things on the internet, uh, after the shooting at... Uh, or the almost shooting Correct, at, at, at Forest, Forest High School. So every, the whole world was watching it. All the news agencies, everybody right. was watching it. And that was the meeting where um, Nancy decided to read her letter. Correct. Now, whether you agree with what Nancy was saying or not, it was poor timing. And it really left a lot of people wondering, what's going on with that school board? Right. Yeah. So is that part of what you're talking about? Well, and I, I had already, I had filed to run. Of course, I'm not, I'm running against Kelly King. Right. Um, Nancy Stacy is not up for re-election. But, you know, even before that, there's just... It, when Earl was on the commission, if he held a position and he was voted down, then now that is his position because he is the board. That's and, the way I feel. You yeah, know, and, yeah. and I'm a, a hospice-specific health care recruiter. I've been doing that on and off since 2000. Um, and, and some companies will hire us from around the country to do kind of a, a look at their business, see what their market research, see who their competition is. And one of the things we tell them is you can disagree all you want in the boardroom, but once you come outside, that's the public face. And, and so... If you if you don't agree with the position, we can do that without without name calling. Can you talk specifically about what you would like to see as a school board member regarding the schools? One of the things I did so I did a public information request when I first um, filed to run. I was curious as a school board member how many times a school board member visited a school. Now. School board policy is during school hours, you must sign in and sign out, just like what happened at Forest. They needed to know every person that was on that campus for safety. Mm -hmm. um, it is school board policy that you sign in and you sign out. And so I was just curious. This is not after school events. This is not volunteering. This is not graduation. This is during school hours. I was appalled, appalled. There, in a 15 month period of time, January 1 of 17 to April 1 of 18, 
A school board member only went to 24 of our 52 schools. So over half of our schools, no school board member was visiting. So how can you tell? Wow, wow. So can, only one school board member visited any of them? At, it, it, there were some schools that at least that, that several school board members were at. I see, I see, okay. But, but there were 26 schools that they never saw a Nobody school board member. Nobody went to. Oh, wow. Right. Um, two of our school board members um, went to one school in that 15-month mo- period of time. So you will be going to the schools? I will. I am making a commitment that in my first year after I'm elected, I will visit every school at least once. How do you get to know what the needs? Each school is different. Mm-hmm. How do you get mm-hmm. to know the needs of that school, get to know administration, get to know the principals, if, if, you've ne- if you're never there? So talk about the needs, more specifically how they will be met. Is, is there a, a need to change the taxing rules or how the money is divvied up? How do we, how do we, how do we meet those needs that the schools are, have? I was asked that question not too long ago. Would I, if, if we need to increase the budget, would, would I vote to increase our budget? Well, unfortunately, the only way to increase the budget is through a millage increase for our ad valorem taxes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would not be in favor of doing that. Um, I'm talking more about, you know, we need more paraprofessionals or or people to help teachers. We need more paraprofessionals in our kindergarten classes. We need, you know, things that I'm sure the district is listening to, but if a school board member, you know, kind of lends to that cause as well. School board is to manage the budget of the school. It's Mm -hmm. a half a billion dollars. Um, that that the school board has in their budget. The superintendent is tasked with the day-to-day, the school board with the money side of um, of that of the school system. Um, the, the millage increase, the one mill that's on the um, referendum on the ballot this time, total agreement that we need to continue that. It sunsets next year. Mm-hmm. That will be on the August 28th ballot. Um, that goes for PE, classroom size reduction, libraries, music, art. Um, and now we're adding into that some safety um, because of, of unfortunately what happened um, in Parkland. Yeah. yeah, yeah that the legislature ruled that every school in every district must have a school resource officer. Yeah, I think it's one of the few times I haven't had anybody arguing about wanting to do something. Correct. So that's one of the good things. And and, and paying for it as well. I haven't heard anybody arguing about how to pay for it. We're, we're all okay. We're all okay. You want to tax me if it's going to save some children? Correct. Yeah. That's a good one, too. Um, so so do you want to talk about fortifying the schools besides the school resource officer? Is there anything else that you think should be done? I know that Dennis McFatton is head of security for the school system, and I know he and um, his team have gone to every school. Some of those schools, think about Osceola and, and um, 8th Street. You know, it's historic district. How do you fence that? How do you... Oh, good point, yeah. You know, um, some of our schools, like East Marion, it is way out in the forest. Um, Some of those that are um, geographically, how long it would take to get someone there. Um, We need to really kind of prioritize and look at... um, which way to go but yes Mm -hmm. we need to harden that target we need to make our schools a safe place that kids feel and teachers and staff feel safe when they go there is is the school board tasked with uh doing something about the grades and and how are the grades not just the schools but the kids in the schools when i was on the literacy council and, and you and i were involved in kiss the horse um the the statistics then were staggering 47 percent of Marion County e- adults are functionally illiterate. Isn't that crazy? Wow. So how can a child get help from their parents when their parents can't read? Yeah. So I think some of those programs that we go back to community involvement, we need, we need to go back to the way it used to be when you and I were kids, you know, moms at PTA and, and, you know, people involved. We need volunteers. We need people. We need our community to step up and help. It's not just the school's job to educate the children. It's the parents. I 
And I think this, the students who do well probably have that happening. How do you persuade? This is this is maybe not a, a an issue that the school board could handle, but maybe you see a way that it could. Um, how would you persuade? Let's say you have a parent and the child, and you say, you know what would make a difference is if you were more interactive with your child. How do you do that? How do you get those parents to listen to you? Lead by example, perhaps. You know, that that's a complex issue. You, yeah. you can't just go into a family and say, we, you know, I, I think you're a poor parent. You know, that's just not... Um, but to have resources there, again, because of my time with the Literacy Council, what an amazing organization. You know, they do literacy for adults, not children. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so maybe parents don't even know that exists. And so we need to educate, um, to send things home with the kids, to um, let them know there are resources there for you. Mm-hmm. How do you talk them into using it, Larry? I don't know. Yeah. But you know what? But I I guess there's a certain segment of that group that you just talked about that really are good parents. Absolutely. And they just don't know. And and if maybe they like hear this interview, maybe they just hear the hearing you say that might be all it takes. Uh, you know, maybe mom and dad are really sp- pinching pennies and they're, so they're working 12 hours a day each and they don't have a whole lot of time with the kids and they're realizing, oh my gosh, I'm a good parent, but I'm neglecting part of my responsibilities. And so they might cut it up, you know, break it up a little bit. There might be a little bit of... We, we need to get, you know, just like we do, just like the, I work with groups with the homeless, we need to give a hand up, not a hand yeah, out. Yeah, we yeah. talk about that with the homeless a lot. We need to do the same with our parents. We need to say we want to give you a we want to give you a hand up. You know, we want to empower you because it'll make the parents' yeah. life better as well as the child. I, I think you promised to visit every school. Just going back to that, I, I think that I like hearing that. I had no idea that I would think exactly like you are that that would be the first instinctive thing to do. This is my new job. I'm a school board member. Let me see the schools. Exactly. How many schools do we have? 52. Wow. So you could do one a week. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we, we're, we're the size of Rhode Island. In fact, as I, we, we did with Earl's campaign and I've, I've done with mine, you travel all over the county putting out signs. And in um, three days, Earl or I put 350 miles on the car putting signs out. <laughs> I bet. It's, it's, yeah, it's a yeah. huge county. Yeah, uh, very yeah. diverse. You know, what, what kids and schools need in the city is very different than what they need in um, Reddick Collier or in um, North Marion or, for that matter, in Stanton Weirsdale. You know, we, we have a very, very diverse um, population in Marion County, and we need to meet the needs where those parents and kids are and in their community. Um, I'm speaking to Sheila Arnett. She is running for um, Marion County School Board in the uh, District 5 seat. It, is that the inc- is the incumbent running? She is. She is, okay. Um, and that is, again, Kelly? Kelly King. Kelly King, okay. Uh, and so you're, you're running for her seat. Um, um, so in, in the work that you've done in the past, like just to bring this up again, obviously you have a heart for the community. Uh, and, I do. And you've been doing this as long as I've known you. That's, you know, that's how I know you, mm-hmm. is, from, is from doing things with the community. Um, is, the, is there anything that the school board as a body, as, instead of the individuals, but is there something the school board as a body could do? Should they show up and do little assemblies at, on the stage at the auditoriums? Is that, would that help at all? I would think, um, you know, Evergreen is has been in the news a lot um, here in Marion County with the external operator and everything that's been happening there. Um, I was shocked, shocked that there was, in that 15-month period of time, one school board member went to that school. Just is, one. Yeah. For 23 minutes. Now, there was a Saturday school, and some of those meetings were, were off-site. Um, we need an engaged school board. We need to go and help the foundation, the education foundation, get business partners, um, get buy-in from some of these large churches. My church, I attend Central Christian Church, and Ward Highlands is our the, our school. Mm-hmm. We do the Good News Club there on Thursdays. Our backpack drive, our we call it um, Jumpstart, has now for the last four years, we will host an event the first Saturday of August. All donations go to those kids. 
If we could get more involved, get more churches involved, more groups involved to do those yeah, things. Yeah. And I think that as a board, you know, stuff the bus is happening right now. Right, right. Um, I've been at the different locations all three Saturdays so far. One school board member came la- Saturday before last for like 45 minutes. That's it. Mm. Um, they, we need we need an involved and engaged school board. Is there anything that we can do? Whenever I hear that teachers are paying for supplies in the classroom, it always makes you wonder, is that even necessary? We had this whole discussion years ago with the lottery was supposed to fix that. And, and, then, and then legislature just whittled away and whittled away at the budget until the lottery is the only thing that funds education Right, now. that's what I understand. Um, so this stuff the bus will go and there will be closets of supplies at every school so a child comes in and, you know, because it's it, it, you use those things. You might have paper and pens and pencils at the beginning of the year, but by November you don't have any more. Mm-hmm. And so there are supply closets there. Um, I have not, again, gone to all these schools yet to know what they need. And so then I would think you just, the foundation and then myself or the other school board members, you go to ABC XYZ construction and and say, hey, will you partner with this school? And when they call and say, we need filler paper and pencils and the boxes of crayons, fill that need. Yeah, I I would love to see that. And I I can't imagine that there aren't some school districts that do fill that need better than others. So I'm sure we can learn from other people. All right, so I'm going to stop talking. Okay. Let you give your, your campaign spiel. And then on the other side, off the air, I already asked if I could do this. So I have some silly, absolutely harmless left field questions for you, okay, on the other side. So just go ahead and make your spiel. And, uh, and everybody, please share this video. And make sure you mention your uh, contact information. I will. Okay. I will. So again, I am Sheila Arnett. I am running for um, school board district five. I am married to former county commissioner Earl Arnett. Um, we have lived and worked and um, in this community since 1981. He and I have been married 27 years. We have three children, four grandchildren. The kids are 47, 34, 19. The wow. grandkids are 22, 16, 9, and 8. So any age kid you have, we have at least one of those. We, um, have, as we have mentioned in this um, broadcast, Earl and I have always been very, very involved in the community, and I felt it was time to give back um, by serving um, the school board. You can follow me on Facebook at Sheila Arnett for School Board District 5. Um, You can also go to votearnett.com. I appreciate very much being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And remember to vote on August 28th. August 28th, yeah. August 28th, that's the day. All right, you ready for your left field questions? Absolutely. Have you ever been to Spain? I have not. No. Do you kind of like the Beatles? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you got the reference there. Okay. Uh, saltines, salty side down or salty side up? I don't pay attention. I normally crumble them in my chili. Oh, so. you crumble them? In, okay, yes. that's a good way. Uh, eggs, sunny side up or scrambled? Scrambled. 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 And the last one. And this, this, by the way, comes from our visit with Judge Williams this morning, Sarah, Sarah Williams. ABBA or Def Leppard? Depends on my mood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sheila, thank you. That was fun. And, uh, and good luck with everything you're doing. Good to see you again. Good and, to see you. And, thank uh, you. You are a, a true doer in our community. And I can say that from personal experience, having seen you with so many different things. Thank you for what you do for all of us. Thank you. And good luck. All right, we will take a little break. We'll be right back. This is WOCA. Direct Connect to UCF, where students who attend the College of Central Florida and graduate with an AA or articulated AS degree are guaranteed admission to the University of Central Florida. Success coaches are ready and waiting to assist you in designing an educational plan that is right for you in any of their locations across Central Florida. Remember, connecting is easy and guaranteed. Find out more at directconnecttoucf.com. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with... 